break. for both sides. Trailing by one frame to two. Shane O'Hara will have the break for Team Ireland. And he'll be up against Adrian Camilleri for Team Malta. It's frame number four. Ireland to break, trailing 2-1. Shane O'Hara looking for a ball down and I didn't hear any noise so it brings Adrian Camilleri to the table. Sean any experience out there what can you tell me about these two? Well I certainly know Shane because he's uh, playing on the UK tour this year and he's been he's been in a little bit of a purple, purple patch recently he reached the last 16 of uh, professional event or well, it was an open event actually but he's mixed in there with the professionals and he's just missed out on a a place in the quarterfinals where he played excellent all weekend also on the UK tour he got to the latter stages seconds. and uh, certainly these championships he's carried that form forward he finished in the top 12 players with 22 out of 36 frames which is is, is fantastic really because some of the frames you could lose you could lose a lot of frames but you just stand and watch your opponent break and finish and you've gone you've done nothing wrong and you can lose five or six seven frames over a championship now I see a little different player here from Malta. Now even though you know this young man Another is nervous, at least he's taken a little more time and he's given himself a chance to gather his concentration because you don't try and hide the fact that you're nervous. You embrace it. That's the key. Yeah, and this, this guy's, uh, Adrian's one of the, again, one of the younger stars of the uh, Maltese team. I think he was here last year in the championships, but... Uh, Certainly not one of the established stars, but uh, he's certainly, as you say, he's taking his time, he's nice and measured. And we talked about this in uh, other matches previously where they've got a nice um, rhythm. They're not rushing shots, they're not... Um, it, they just, you know, it's nice and composed at the table. I have a philosophy, Mick. You know what my philosophy is when I'm really nervous? What's I want to look good missing. <laughs> yeah, well, I just... I spend my time telling myself how many times I've done this before, Jim. I, that's my theory on it. I, I know it's nerve-wracking playing for your country, but the thrill of winning under these circumstances is the best thrill you can possibly have in your life. And I just tell myself I'm good enough, I've done it before, handle the situation. Yeah. Yeah, I've been unfortunate. I've not actually been out in this position. Jim, you say you've played in the team snooker. Canada and Jim seconds. and Mick, you team Australia, um, but it's a similar way to refereeing sometimes that um, you get out there and you're, you're really nervous and you're edgy and you, and you just have to sort of take a few deep breaths and you say, right, I've been here, I've done this before, I know what I'm doing and just get on with it. Oh. And that, that looked like a serious foul. Well, watch it again. See it here he again. just jabbed, he didn't stroke, he just jabbed that one. Now, does that mean, Sean, the white ball has to be replaced to well, where it was? the white ball should be replaced on the table as to where it was. Because that was a serious foul. And the definition of a serious foul? Well, it's a series of fouls. that They're, they're not standard fouls, Jim. Um, say the jump shot is one of them. There's some, it looks like he's given him cue ball in hand here. Now, this is wrong. I mean, uh, Sean, you're, you're going to have to enlighten certainly me and the, and the folks at home. Could you expand on that? I mean, you feel it's wrong because the cue ball should have been replaced? I think the cue ball should have been replaced there because it certainly looked from the angle we saw where the, the, the yellow has jumped, the, sorry, the cue ball has jumped over the yellow. It's, if, it's, if it's jumped over a ball, it would have struck under, no, under a normal shot. And I think he's jumped over that yellow. Now, whether Andy was in a position where he, he thought he hadn't, it's gone to the side, and therefore, that's why he's giving him cue ball in hand. But from the camera angle we had, it certainly looked like it's gone over the yellow. As I say, it should have been the serious foul called and the cue ball replaced. As it turns out, it probably won't affect the result of the game. Where the white was compared to ball in hand, there's not much different. It's just a, it's a technicality on the rules. And uh, the rule is serious foul, the white ball, and any balls touched in that shot exactly. should be replaced to where yeah. they were. Any other balls that are moved in that situation. But he would still have two visits. He would still have two Without visits, doubt. yeah. He's just queuing up there, looks where he wants to play this red. He's actually leaning over the yellow ball, that's Lucky why seconds. you see Andy was in there close, looking at his waistcoat. 
This would be very inspiring for Team Ireland after dropping the first two frames if they could get back to level pegging here. Well, realistically, they've looked a lot more composed, haven't they, Jim? They uh, no, sh no shots in the one break in the first two frames. So they've done nothing wrong. When they have got to the table in the last two frames, they've looked a lot more composed, taken their time, working it out. And uh, as we talked about earlier, they must start favourite, especially if they were able to get back to two all here. And it almost looks like Team Malta had all their bankers at the front end. And Ireland, well, they've still got some great players to come. Yeah, I did suggest that. They've loaded the two, two, probably the two of the biggest guns at the beginning, and they've loaded uh, a couple of the big guns at the end as well. So they've left this middle of the team exposed, I think, to Team Ireland. At the same time, these guys must have played very well during the tournament. I know during the game against Australia, they led us, sorry, we led them 8-4, and they've come back to beat us 12-9, so all of their players must have played well at some stage. Inexperience may show there. Just needs one good shot here. Two visits plant. to go as well. He has got two visits, yeah, but uh, these things can go wrong. No question. Just wants to be certain you can take a look at his face and almost scowling at the balls, just totally wrapped in concentration. Taking plenty of time, which is very good under the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, similar to John Collum in the last frame. Did exactly the same. You, you heard 37 is quite a lot. Second visit. That's okay. He'll just bump the red onto the other red again and leave it over the pocket. It's just going to be really positioned from the last red to the eight. Just makes it a bit nerve-wracking. It's wonderful when you've got two shots getting onto that black. There's no question of that. But looks like the black goes two different spots, either into the middle pocket or to the corner pocket. So he can go too far or not far enough and still have a pretty reasonable shot at the black. Just bump this in and slide up the side cushion. Nice pace and leaving the easiest of eights. And Ireland loves it. Jane O'Hara parks that eight ball to the bottom of the pocket and with it, level pegging here in Blackpool, 2-2.